In this video, we will consider the simplest decision analysis where only one decision is needed. For single-stage decision problems, there are many different approaches. Some of the approaches are more optimistic while others are more conservative. These different approaches sometimes lead to different decision recommendations. The decision makers must understand the approaches available and then select the specific approach that is the most appropriate. These approaches are also referred to as rules. For example, the maxi-max rule is an optimistic approach, while maxi-mean rule is a conservative approach. I'm going to describe each rule for you. The maxi-max decision rule is when a decision maker optimistically believes that nature will always be on his side, regardless of what decision is made. The recommendation is made on the alternative that leads to the largest possible payoff. To apply the maxi-max decision rule, we would have to build a payoff matrix first, then determine the maximum payoff for each alternative. In the second step, we choose and recommend an alternative associated with the largest maximum payoff. By following this rule, the company in our introductory example should build a large complex and expects a payoff of $8.5 million. In contrast to the maxi-max decision rule, maxi-mean rule is suitable if the decision maker pessimistically assumes that the nature will always be against him regardless of what decision is. The recommendation is made on the alternative that hedges against the worst, worst possible outcome of a decision. To apply the maxi-mean decision rule, we first find a minimum payoff for each alternative, and then choose and recommend the alternative associated with the highest minimum payoff. In our example, the company should build a small complex and expects a payoff of $3 million. Instead of using the payoff matrix, a similar process can be applied to the regret matrix. The minimax decision rule is appropriate if the decision maker intends to minimize the worst possible. The recommendation is made on an alternative that hedges against the worst possible regret of a decision. We first build a regret matrix, determine maximum regret for each alternative, and then recommend the alternative associated with the lowest maximum regret. In our example, the company expects a $3.8 million opportunity loss if it builds a medium complex. The first three rules we just learned do not require knowledge of the probabilities of the states of nature. But in many real-life situations, we may be provided with probability assessments of the states of nature. The next two rules are particularly helpful when such probabilities are available. The expected monetary value, or EMV rule, incorporates these probabilities and calculates the expected monetary value for each alternative. We first calculate the weighted average payout for each alternative, and then choose the alternative with the highest EMV that is, the alternative with the highest expected payoff. Using one-third chance for each of the three states of nature, the company would have the highest expected payoff if it chooses to build a medium complex. The expected payoff is $3.03 million. The expected opportunity loss, or EOL decision rule, is similar to the EMV decision rule, but is based on the regret matrix. Based on the regret matrix, we calculate the weighted average regret for each alternative, and then choose the alternative with the lowest EOL, that is, the alternative with the smallest expected opportunity loss. In our example, the company expects the least amount of opportunity loss if it builds a medium complex. Now. Let's take a look at how to apply the EMV rule when the decision problem is presented using a tree. Instead of moving from the left to the right when we raise and build a tree, we move from the right to the left when we make a decision. When we encounter a chance node, that's a circle, we calculate the EMV based on the branches, 
That is all the states of nature at a node. When we encounter a decision node that's represented using a square, we choose the branch with the highest EMV. Let's focus on the very top of the decision tree. There are three terminal nodes, all labeled using triangles. Assume the company builds a small complex. If the demand is weak, the company will bring in a revenue of $4 million. After considering the $1 million cost of building a small complex, that will leave the company with $3 million payoff. For another two states of nature or terminal nodes, the expected payoff is also $3 million. Moving one step left to the three terminal nodes, we encounter a chance node labeled using a circle. There are three states branching out from this chance node. The company will end up in one of the three terminal nodes, with one-third a chance of having a payoff of $3 million for weak demand, a one-third chance of having a payoff of $3 million for medium demand, and another one-third of chance of having a payoff of $3 million for strong demand. The weighted average of these three payoffs is $3 million, and this is the EMV of this chance node. Now, we move down to the middle and bottom chance nodes. Using the same kind of calculation, we can calculate the EMV at the medium complex chance node to be $3.033 million, and the EMV at the large complex chance node to be $2.5 million. After we calculate all the EMVs at the chance nodes, we can move one step to the left. Now, we are faced with a square, a decision node, where we would choose the branch or the path with the highest EMV. By comparing the three EMVs we just calculated, the medium complex branch in the middle has the highest EMV. Therefore, we would go with building a medium complex and expect the highest expected payoff. In summary, the decision maker will choose the path alternative that leads to the highest EMV. In this example, that would be building a medium complex. We also cross out the other two alternatives in the decision tree for your reference.